Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And so today I have a video for you after some positive comments on my last AI or ML focus video um, on how you can use Airflow and ML flow. You know, they're both flowers flowing through the air, right? Um, to do your machine learning uh, while using Airflow to manage it all, because there's obviously going to be some ingestion and some things around your ML flow uh, projects that aren't actually going to be able to be accomplished by ML flow. Um, and so just to kind of give you a quick high level understanding of what ML flow is, open source ML platform um, that just gives you frameworks where you can, uh, you know, split get, like tools to split your data sets into testing and training, um, register models so that you can reuse them in a central repository, um, bring in, you know, example models that other people have developed, um, and just really allows you to, you know, operationalize ML workflows without, you know, needing to go into some kind of proprietary system. And there's a ton of different uh, contributors to this very popular uh, project that um, a lot of people are using. And so because it's an open source project and you don't have like a best in class UI on top of it, so that's where Airflow comes in to actually act as, you know, your layer on top of ML flow to, you know, show you exactly what's happening within there, managing, scheduling everything around your ML models and also you know, it just to be able to handle the scale that ML can get to, you know, where you have hundreds of models, your DAGs have you know, hundreds of tasks within them, it can really get hairy. And so having Airflow as kind of that single source of truth and something that has management tools on top of it to actually, uh, you know, ease the process of managing your ML models instead of letting them spiral out of control is super useful. And so that's what we'll be doing today. And so Another thing to note around MLflow is that typically you have to set up a cloud version. You have to uh, host your models in a three bucket somewhere, um, and it's kind of a lot to actually set up. So what I'm doing today, and I'll drop the link to this in the description below, um, is following a guide put together by my amazing colleague Tamara. She, Tamara, she's done a couple of these uh, great use cases that will actually spin up a local uh, mini IO, which is basically local S3 directory. So I don't have to have an AWS account and I'll also spin up a, a local environment of MLflow. So I can register my models locally, pull them, and I don't have to set up any of these traditional uh, frameworks around setting up MLflow because typically, you know, because it's an open source project, you have to install it yourself. You have to set up all the pathing, the networking, and it's just incredibly uh, difficult. So this option of just downloading this tutorial, this kind of repo, and then you have a local MLflow environment, you have a local mini IO, so you can start doing some local model training, local experimentation off this repository. So I really hope you know you take this, follow the link below, and actually get into giving it a try. Um, and so to kind of walk you, give you a quick little walk around about what's going on within this repository. So number one, if we go into our requirements, um, font.txt, we need to have the MLflow providers, Amazon providers, MLflow skinny is just, uh, different type or sub package of MLflow for some models we'll use. Uh, as for SDK, this is just uh, open source SDK from Astronomer that just simplifies some of the typical data transfer operations and you know switch between Python and SQL, and then scikit-learn, which is just provides a lot of uh, easy ML models that we can just pull from and use. Um, and so now, after we've done that, I also want to show you, so there's some packages we have to install. So uh, Python 3 dev, git, um, so that we can use Git within the context of this repository. And then you'll also notice we're doing a doc compose override to install MLflow alongside and mini IO alongside Airflow when we spin up our local Airflow environment, which I've already done. So if I, if you look at my, let's do Docker PS here real quick, you will see that I have uh, my mini IO and MLflow running locally on port 9001 and uh, 5000 here. So, Additionally here, just to kind of give you some other things, so you have uh, your uh, DAG integrity test, no plugins, but then we also have our ML mini IO include directory. So this is where your data is actually being held locally and also our MLflow backend DB, which is just a fi DB file here. Um, and then we also have a CSV of possible information as well. Um, so now they've kind of got you going around here, let's start building our DAG. Um, and you'll notice there's also some more advanced DAGs in this repo um, and I'll pick a future video on those. Uh, but I wanted to start out with kind of more simple and then build up to more advanced videos. Um, so you kind of get an understanding of, you know, the basic concepts before. Um, so to actually, so we're going to do this all in one DAG here today. So first we're going to do install some, or bring in some packages. So we have the DAG task decorators, date time, data frame, just allows us to pass data frames um, 
uh, or use number one pandas day frames, but also pass in between tasks. Uh, MLflow client hooks, so MLflow doesn't have an operator, so we'll be using hooks to interact with it. Um, then you also have this create register model operator, which is an operator for MLflow or flow to register model to the MLflow registry. Um, and then there's also the S3 create bucket operator. So we're creating an S3 bucket on that local mini IO environment. Uh, sorry, data guy was acting up or data dog was acting up. Um, so now after we're done with that, we'll have some MLflow parameters here, incorporate. So our MLflow connection ID, again, this is all set up locally. So if I go into my environment file, you'll see all these variables set here. Um, and this is just because, you know, we're using a local MLflow directory. So Obviously, if you're using hosted, switch these out. Uh, but here we're just setting the MLflow connection ID, mini IO connection ID, uh, the max results of MLflow uh, experiments. So when we pull in, we don't just overload our uh, web, our local environment. Um, we have our experiment name that we're going to run. Um, so we're going to try and predict housing data um, based on a scikit-learn provided housing data set. And then we're going to register model name. So just the model that we're going to create here and artifact bucket to store all our data from our model training. So after we've gotten all of our significant variables set up, we'll then do our DAG definition, no schedule, start, you know, just the standard BS DAG, uh, DAG uh, config parameters. You know, I don't really run any of these in production, obviously. Um, and then what we'll do here is with the S3 create bucket operator, create buckets if not exists. Um, so here we're just gonna, so this is where mini IO comes in handy, where you don't have to have an AWS connection ID um, to like pass something into S3 buckets. You can kind of use it as an intermediary location. Um, and so here we're just creating a bucket um, called artifact bucket. So ML flow data housing. Um, and then what we'll do next is actually create a new ML flow experiment. And so because we're using an ML flow hook and not an provider, because there isn't just a generic ML flow operator, and you have to submit run operator, we don't have one, it's just like, you know, run an ML flow operation for, I mean, I think obvious reasons, it's kind of would just be the same as like a wrap around a hook here. Um, so here, create experiment, passing in our experiment name, which is just, um, you know, housing, our artifact bucket we just created, um, and then the context that we're gonna pass in from our previous and then the only thing this context is doing is it's just going to read in information around that current DAG run, so the DAG run time. And basically that's going to act as a unique identifier for our um, new MLflow experiment, so we don't just keep overwriting each other. Um, so here, setting that just as TS, um, then we have MLflow hook. So uh, creating that client hook using our connection ID we said earlier. Um, then we have our experiment information. So running the experiment um, or running a create experiment with the parameters of um, our timestamp plus experiment name. So just uh, housing plus timestamp or timestamp plus housing, and then creating an artifact location in that artifact bucket. Um, so creating all these. So when you register a new experiment, MLflow will create artifacts, create kind of the outline for that new model you're going to run and save it into that artifact location. Um, and so Next thing we'll be doing, and then I'll show you how kind of all this gets passed when we look at the actual uh, code and the, or not look at the code, but look at that, this in the Airflow UI a little closer. Um, and then after that, what we're doing is just returning that as a JSON. So taking that experiment information, then pulling the experiment ID and returning it. So we're returning just the experiment ID contained within that uh, experiment information JSON. And that is because all we're going to do is then use that uh, experiment ID as a string. So use it to reference where uh, that experiment is. So just, you know, where it is in that. Um, so you can see your new experiment information request. It's just a unique reference to that experiment. And then what we'll do is pass that as a string. Um, so what this data frame is doing is just saying, hey, the output of this task is gonna be a data frame. Um, and then what we're gonna do is do some feature scaling. Um, and so feature scaling is just kind of normalizing your data points on a plot. Um, we're fetching in some California housing data, fetching the standard scaler to do that scaling, uh, importing MLflow, obviously, pandas to use pandas data frames. So here what we're doing is fetching California housing data. So you just use that function to fetch it as a da pandas data frame, saving it as DF. Then we are uh, pulling an MLflow that scikit-learn.all log. And what this is just doing is loading in our scikit-learn, uh, just loading in scikit-learn. 
Uh, and then we have target, so our median house value, that's what we're trying to uh, predict. So we're gonna drop that target from our testing data, which is X, uh, save it just in that Y data frame, and then we're gonna initialize a the scaler. Then we are going to start an experiment run, or to or, sorry, start a run of the scaler um, to fit our training data um, to that uh, standard, you know, uh, feature engineer is what it's called to define, hey, what are the features that we're going to be using to predict our Y value, fit those features onto that standardized kind of graph plot that I talked about so you don't have uh, outliers affect the data too much. Um, and then you have uh, here logging that model, so scaling it, um, logging the metrics around that model. And then what we'll be doing next is then after we've scaled all those values, we then save that predicted value back into our uh, X data set as the target value. Um, so you can see a reference by target. And so then once we're done with that, we've created our model, we've tracked it. So now we can use this model to make predictions on some more data. So if you wanted to use this same data set, what you would do is just split X in half or X not in half. You want to do like 80% X use this in the training data set and then split the other 20%. Um, and there's even uh, tools to actually help you do the scikit learn. Um, but just something you know here, for this example, I just wanted to show you how to create a model. So once you've created a model, then you can use it to make predictions, but you'll need obviously fresh data to make those predictions on. Um, so here we're creating a registered model uh, with this create register model operator. So this is actually a uh, official ML flow operator. Um, task ID, create register model, uh, again, just using that TS as the task um, unique identifier, registered model name, because so we can run this multiple times and just create new models. And then just have some tags here for model type, regression uh, data is housing. Um, so just remember running a regression model on housing data. Um, and so, so then once your model is registered, you can trigger, feed it data, run new operations to actually trigger it. So here we'll do is just have create experiment, ML flow. Uh, we created that experiment, saved in that artifact bucket, created a bucket that doesn't exist, scaled the features, created the registered model, um, and then we will initialize this as just the ML flow tutorial DAG. And boom, that is how you create a uh, model within ML flow. Um, so relatively easy. Um, so be, the way we actually say this, what type of model it's going to use for its predictions is the regression model. So in this case, what it's going to do is just do linear regression on our X values to predict what Y value there will be. So not super complex, but you could switch this out for whatever other uh, model you might want to use. So that's you know kind of the ease of this as well as you if you want to change this up, start experimenting your own, go ahead, go crazy. So now if you also wanted to just add a predict step to this, all you would do is just find your unique identifier. So here I just kind of hard coded it in. Uh, but you would read in this uh, TS plus registered model endpoint. So here, and then bring it into file this is to open. Um, and this is how you reference it. Say, hey, open that. Uh, oh, no, this is actually my feature data frame. So open my, oh yeah, just DF. Okay, so just the, yeah, whatever predicted data you're gonna use. So in this case, you would, you would have to split that California data set and then make it into two use part of it for the training, part of it for the testing, um, or if you have another identical, or not identical, the same shape California data, housing data set, you could also use that here. Um, it gets a little messy in this addition, so I'm just gonna do it, but just to give you an idea of like where you could extend this going forward, because uh, I always like to give you a little bit of homework to go forward. Um, and if this is interesting, let me know, and I can kind of keep going forward on making more ML flow content. Um, but I said that like I was ending, I'm not ending yet. So now going into, our uh, local airflow environments, you can see, you know, I can run this as many times as I want, obviously. Um, but if I go into the graph view here, I wanted to just go task by task and show you what's happening. Um, so here, you know, obviously create buckets if not exist. Um, is this, yeah, more details, there we go. Um, and you can see here, just creating a bucket, then it is, uh, you know, bucket name is ML flow data housing, see it in logs, um, and then it's pass, it's actually not passing that out. Um, so then what we have in create experiment, if I go to more details, um, we have our rendered template of experiment name, housing is artifact. Um, and so you can see that there setting artifact bucket, you can see within the logs, it is just creating, uh, posting an experiment creation to that ML flow API. Um, so when you're creating your experiments, you're just posting them to a local API. So you can see that down here. Um, 
And then under XCOMs, you see just returning value class and string um, value of one and that. And that's because we just have one experiment uh, so far. And so the task information of it is just the first task wrong. So next, we can go to the scale features task. Um, details here. See on our render template, so just the experiment idea one, it's our first experiment. Um, and then if we go into, you'll see uh, we are done for in that California uh, housing data um, and then just returning uh, these scaled features. And then, and so that's because we were just saving that data set X as, you know, with the target Y. Um, and then if we go down to create registered model, you will see we have registered our success. So here we're again, just, you know, sending that post connection um, where we have created our new tab, our new model within MLflow um, that has, or that has been trained on our California housing data. Um, and so Hope this is kind of giving you an idea of what it looks like to train a new model just off based off of data um, and gives you a good starting point for working with MLflow. I really just want to make this introduce you to running MLflow locally and some of the ways you can do that. Um, and then I'll get into more advanced concepts as we progress. Uh, so hope this is helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It helps me immensely and uh, have a good one. Data guy out. Peace.